And we're back here on Sun Devil Extra, sticking with the basketball theme today. And we're now joined by senior member of the men's basketball program. It's Bobby Hurley. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So we were just talking with Graham Rossini about the, the big exhibition game coming up on Sunday against Duke. And of course, that school has so much of a past with your family, specifically with your dad. Knowing you're going in there, it'll be quite the atmosphere, we all assume, uh, with the Blue Devil fans welcoming back in Bobby and, and uh, yourself, of course, and, and the rest of this ASU program. How do you envision that setting being for you this weekend? Uh, I think it's going to be really special. You know, it's one of the all-time greats coming back for the first time in a totally different setting. So, you know, I don't know how it's going to be, honestly. I mean, I hope they cheer, not boo. <laughs> you know, I think that's the right thing to do. Um, no, but I think it's just a lot of excitement around the program to get the opportunity to play at Duke. What does it mean to you, knowing that, you know, your dad did so much for that program and, and, you know, one of the blue bloods of the sport? What does it mean for you, though, to go back and be able to play on that floor that your dad played on? I mean, he did not lose on that floor, so, right. you know, I, I don't want to have a losing record there. I think he only lost, I think, three games there. Um, but it's, it's really special. I remember going as a kid, I think... 2016, uh, it was Jaleel Okafor and Tyus Jones year. They won a national championship mm -hmm. that year, and we went to the Midnight Madness. And uh, you know they treat Bobby Hurley like a legend over there. Um, but really, uh, if my number is called and I play, I just am focused on playing well. But I'm, I'm really excited. You know, your dad and, and it seems like your whole family just very intense. You're, yeah. you're wired and locked in all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you envision him kind of taking a step back for a moment, maybe when you walk on the floor for the first time mm -hmm. or during introductions, where he might take in the moment a little bit? Yeah, I think during introductions and pre-game activities, he'll definitely take it in. Um, but overall, he is a competitor at heart, so when the ball is jumped, he is going to be completely locked in on winning a basketball game. So He's going to still be wearing that ring, but yeah, he's going to yeah, be locked yeah, in yeah. to beat him, right? Absolutely. I, I want to ask you about when you, were, when you were growing up, and I think all you know, sons especially, you look up to your dad, and, and you think your dad is a big deal. Was there a specific moment where you were like, okay, wait, my dad is, is different? Yeah, I would say it's when you get access to YouTube, um, and you search <laughs> up your dad's name. And I remember watching the Michigan game uh, that they played there and at home because they have the full length uh, games on YouTube. And I was like, I did not know he was this good. And you just kind of watch more and more. And then you start to see the NBA passes he's making. And then you see, oh, he just rejected a ball screen and scored on Gary Payton. So uh, it's just moments like that where you really step back and you're like, he, he was pretty good. Yeah, he was <laughs> different, right? Yeah, he's not he, like every other dad no, out there, I no, guess. No, right? I don't, I don't yeah. think any other dad's checking him up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about holidays with your family because we've already talked about your dad's intensity. Let's talk about your uncle, of mm -hmm. course, and what he's done at UConn, your cousin now a national yep. championship there, uh, your grandpa, 39 years at St. Anthony's in uh, New Jersey. When you guys all get together, mm -hmm. are you always still competing? Is it, is it more relaxed? What is the vibe like with the whole Hurley clan together? Yeah, I would say a misrepresentation of the Hurleys is that it is all basketball, yeah. all intensity, all competitive. When we're in a relaxed family setting, it is all family talk for the most part. Obviously, sometimes basketball comes up, um, but it's much more relaxed environment. And that's kind of everyone in our family off the court, very relaxed, just kind of want to hang out. You know, talk about football, talk about golf, talk about anything other than basketball, to be honest. Step aside, right? Yeah, yeah step leave aside. It to the side. How has the adjustment been? You know, you moved to Arizona, obviously, like 10 years ago now, yeah. and, and this is where you went to high school, and now where you're going to college, of course. How was that adjustment moving to the West Coast and, and settling and really finding your roots here in, in uh, the state of Arizona? Yeah, I would say it was definitely an adjustment. I remember me and my sister flying here, and to fly in, you don't see a lot of green. It's a lot of desert. So it was, a, it was an adjustment uh, culturally. But I moved, I think, six or seven times in my life, right. so I was like, this is just another stop. But I've really found Arizona to be a home now. You've been associated with this program since 2015, and I, I went to school here. I remember when you would be wearing the bow ties, sitting at the yeah. end of the bench, grabbing the stat sheets over by Sean Cresp and Timmy yeah. and Kyle Dodd, and now you're a member of the, the team, of course, and you have been for four years, long as tenured Sun Devil on this year's roster, yeah. by the way. When you, when you think about all of the great moments that have happened from beating Kansas twice to, you know, making March Madness, the guard you years, mm -hmm. all of the exciting moments this program has had. And now you being a part of the program, you know, what are some of those top highlights in your mind uh, over the course of the last nine years? And, and what are you guys looking to do, you know, moving forward as well? Yeah, I would say you always look at the bad and kind of <laughs> laugh at it. Um, sure. Yeah, it, it's the hard days with your teammates in practice that a lot of people don't see that are 
really the best moments because you get the most connected. Something that was really fun we did last year was the overseas foreign trip, and yeah. that was just great spending time uh, with my teammates and also my sophomore year going to the NCAA tournament and playing really well. So um, that I've had a lot of good moments here, made a lot great connections with both uh, coaches and teammates. He just mentioned practice, by the way. It should be noted he just came from practice. Yeah. He was running through ball screens. <laughs> So he, he might still be a little shaky right now, yeah, but you yeah. couldn't tell this guy's a pro uh, when he's got the mic on as well. Speaking of which, I want to ask you about that. Mm -hmm. You are a sports journalism major, went to the, the Cronkite School, which is a great Shout program, Cronkite. right? Yeah. Shout out Cronkite, of course, yeah. always. You know, what, what kind of inspired you to go down that path and, and uh, you know, how much do you enjoy being also in front of the camera as well, not just playing basketball. Yeah, no, I, I love talking about basketball. The first time I realized I should do it was actually with Tim Healy. Okay. He did an interview with me for a pregame show versus Washington State, probably when I was like 14. Still and, rocking the bow ties yeah, at that yeah, point, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 and um, <laughs> I showed it to my mom and she was like, Bobby, you are really good at this. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I should pursue this as a passion because it was something I really just enjoyed doing. And so going to Cronkite was a great experience, you know, you know, just a ton of internships yep. and opportunities you get there and so I kind of just wanted to go that route and now I got Sean Crespin shout out to him helping me out um, so just trying to perfect my craft before I get out into the real world. Sean might be able to correct us here I, I would imagine he's currently an intern with Sun Devil Radio yeah, Network. Yeah. has to be the first ever intern to <laughs> be on the program. Yeah and on a team. And on a team. Yeah, so no. yeah. we're, we're really breaking yeah, barriers all over the place today with this interview. Where, when, you're, when your playing career is done, mm -hmm. where do you want this career to uh, eventually mold into? Yeah, I, I'd love to be an analyst, okay. you know, on any network just calling college basketball games. You know, I grew up watching college basketball my entire life, so I think that would be my dream job. You know, a lot of people talk about the prep. Oh, you have to watch so many games to watch so many films. I love doing that. So I think it, it would be a dream for me. Yeah, it's not really work, is no, it? No, no, not work at all. I want to ask you about this year's team because there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of buzz. Mm -hmm. A great incoming freshman class coming in. Of course, a bunch of transfers out of the portal as well. First year in the Big 12. There's so many different things going on. Mm -hmm. You're just a couple days away from the Duke exhibition, but then the regular season starts uh, on November 5th. Mm -hmm. What have you noticed from this team and, and what do Sun Devil fans, uh, what should they expect? from this style of basketball? Yeah, I, I think it's a lot more athleticism and you know we have a good blend of young talent and old talent. Uh, in college, you need experience to win. And but at the same time, you need, sometimes you gotta out talent teams and just have better players, which um, I think, no disrespect to previous teams, but this is just a very talented team. Um, so I think you'll see a good blend. We're still learning how to play with each other. So there's obviously gonna be some bumps, but um, yeah, we're, we're really just improving. How excited are you knowing that, yeah, you've had a secret scrimmage and you're kind of getting into that mojo, but let's talk specifically about Sunday against Duke. Mm -hmm. How excited are you as a competitor to finally see another name on the chest yeah. across from you instead of having to run reps against your teammates all the time? Yeah, I don't think people understand that. When you are playing the same <laughs> six or seven people the entire uh, summer and throughout this uh, early fall period, it kind of gets irritating. You kind of just want to knock someone over, but it's good to finally just come together as a team and, okay, we have an opponent that's not ourselves. Last one for you. Going into the Big 12, a conference that many would consider the best conference in college basketball, if not number one, number two, right there at the top. You're a competitor, and, and I know everyone in the program is a competitor. What's that like to, to know you're going to be competing in the best of the best in terms of college basketball conferences? It's great. I think the Pac-12 um, was a tremendous conference. I think it did have some downsides with uh, fan crowds and just some of the locations, but the Big 12 is going to have a lot of fans. It's going to be really mm -hmm. competitive. There's no trap games in the Big 12. You lose a game, it's probably not a bad loss. Yeah. So I think we're looking forward to just playing free. You'll have a really good opponent every night, and yeah, we're excited. There's no reason not to pack DFA each and every night. Yeah. It's, it's also the, the part of this probably as well. Probably a top 25 team. So. Yeah, they probably will be, or a team that made the NCAA tournament either last year or most likely will be this year. How about this guy right here, huh? He's poised, he's seasoned, he's ready to go on the hardwood as well. ASU and Duke, Sunday at 4 o'clock, exhibition game, and then regular season gets going on November 5th. Thanks a lot, Bobby. Thanks. We'll be right back on Sun of Electra.